Jesus, you've got flexible, ain't you? <laughs> That's what my boyfriend says. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome, it's Howard from HDS Electrical and today me and Mitch have got the great pleasure of taking over a HMO because the electricians were kicked off. Now they've actually done one next door that we were offered and the guy kind of messed us around so we didn't end up doing it. <laughs> one of the guys has been speaking to the other electrician, it's been first fixed and they absolutely balls it up and they're happy to rerun cables in a finished job which is never good and I'm glad it's not us and they kept they wanted a last minute price they wanted a last minute price cheap kept saying oh well if your if your cost is uh, good enough if your price is cheap enough we've got a lot more for you and I'm thinking you're asking us to take over a mess you want it done yesterday and you want it done cheap thrilling Yes, we can't wait. So luckily, we can do it quick enough for them. And to be honest, I wasn't sure I wanted to do it anyway. But we are taking over this job. It's just not quite to our standards. I know it's very cheap HMOs and their time and money is a pressure, a massive pressure. We're feeling a little bit of that pressure, but standards are important. We're almost all trying to use these jobs like training grounds just to breed standards, breed experience into some of our team and just yeah improve the team so that for us is as much as almost making money off the jobs which is why we all do it right so because there certainly isn't much money on these jobs. Let me take you through some of the examples and this is a prime example it's just a bit messy for us so is it acceptable? It'll probably pass the regs, um, not fixed. So it hasn't got any strain relief, but to be honest, in a concealed wall, it's not, it's not gonna cause any harm really. However, it just looks untidy. We got different length cables, we got different twists. We got cables taped up in multiple places, messily, twisting around each other, kinked cables different holes. We're just gonna neatly clip some of that down the side to the best of our ability with what we've got. Here's another little exa example and I'm actually gonna show you. Look, again, we've got two cables. Looks like a three core and a one mil. Looks like a three core, 1.5. We can't afford 1.5 with the cost of price of copper these days. Are you mad? So. <laughs> We've got a three core and a one five. Look at the way they're just twisting round each other. It looks like two vines growing. So we're gonna pull that out. I'm gonna show you a simple trick. Actually, pull it through here just to be a bit easier. My apprentice taught me this nine years ago. That's right, Mikey, the uh, ginger prince, showed me this nine years ago. So if you're willing to learn, you can learn off anyone. I quite happily learn off him. He's now become an amazing electrician and my business partner. So here we go. So you can see how it starts off twists, wonk, wonk, wonk. So what I'm gonna do, what he taught me, is use my thumb to straighten it. Now, that was just a little example. Put your thumb in, glide it down. I'm obviously gonna start from the top little bit tricky because I'm standing on tiptoes but I'm just gonna use my thumb to straighten it back up again. The other thing you can do is push it against a wall or a surface. Let's try with this and then run it down the surface just like that. Lovely way of getting cable straight and it's been so long since I used 1.5 I think it was for industrial last time we used it because domestic's generally not big enough it's not needed it's a lot easier working with one mil and cheaper but straight away you can see the difference in those two we've got a strain there we've got to be careful of but straight away look at that that's how, if there's a cable gonna be taped, a little bit of tape at the top, 
a little bit of tape at the bottom. Mitch, you don't have any tape on you, do you? No, you don't. That would be too organized and we didn't think of that. So that is a lot better looking cable. Straight again, hold it at the top, run your fingers down it. Look at that. Straight away, that looks a little bit better. It's not perfect, but straight away, one run of my finger looks a little bit better already. What are you smoking? Box is fairly neatly cut out. Um, looks level, we obviously haven't leveled it. They've got clips fairly even. Clipping into brick can be a nightmare, so I get that. Um, probably, if you do anything like this, Mitch, maybe use a bit of banding. Just put a hammer drill, one, two, three. A little bit of banding, one screw, banding, one screw, banding, one screw. It'll just then keep them a bit neater, as long as it's deep enough. Um, and probably be a bit easier sometimes than hammering into brick. We went through that in another video. Hammering into bricks sometimes is lovely, sometimes is an absolute nightmare. I don't know why it wasn't brought through that hole. I don't know why they didn't clip that together. So, but there's a, a little lesson. What we do when cables are coming out of the ceiling is we always put a clip right on the edge of the joist. So just like that, we want to indicate whenever cables are coming out of the ceiling, whenever cables are, cables are a coiled up mess above. Um, so whenever we've got down lights or whenever we've got a pendant or smoke alarm, we'll bring it out, we'll put a clip in it. It stops plasterers hopefully chucking them up. It's not foolproof as we found out, but it should hopefully give some indication why have we clipped it right at the bottom. I use a bit of common sense, but we know that's missing today as well. <laughs> so that's how we do that. The other thing is when we do coil cables up, we coil them very neatly, make sure they're clearly tucked up in the ceiling so there can be no confusion. So we're back downstairs and we've got an example here of some fairly good clipping. So, yes, yeah, the clips are fairly even together. They look fairly neat. Cables have been run fairly neatly. I like the way they've drilled through the hole. Slightly off centre, but clipping into blocks, so that can be tricky before it's overboarded. Got a bit of slack on the hole there, so not too bad. And neatly run along there. That's, that's quite a nice job. That's quite a neat job. Segregation of band one and band two cables. Aerial cable is separate from power cables to stop interference. That we like. Looks like another one here to be clipped down. Um, not use the right cables you can actually if you're a bit cheeky fit one of these into these or you can get special shotgun clips we tend to prefer to run shotgun cable but not our job here's a prime example you've got two sets of cables i think they've been done by different people because they look different you've got one's got not much of a bend there a little bit untidy hard when they come to put insulation in but all the clipping is even and nice. And at least we got kind of gradual bends, so it gives a bit of protection from there. I still prefer the way this is done slightly, in some ways. But this second one, no clipping in the middle. He has actually done some, I'm presuming it's a he, that's very sexist of me. He, she, they, them, whatever you want to identify yourself as has actually done uh, symmetrical clips, which I like. I like to stagger them because actually, like is normally done, it just gets them that little bit closer, keeps them a little bit neater, but symmetry is all good. And once again, just running a thumb down one of these, you'd be amazed the difference will make from cable A to cable B. I'll come round and see the cable. I've just run my thumb down compared to the one I haven't and you can see it's just a little bit neater. Now, 
My tutor in college told me it's always good to clip to the edge for thermal reasons because it's going to dissipate heat quicker. I've always thought that's a bit sketchy because of people screwing plasterboard screws in. Now he always said, get them to come and put one layer of plasterboard up, then you come and put your cable in, then they do the other plasterboarding. And in reality, when is that ever going to happen? Who's going to do half of every wall and go, I know, we'll wait for the electricians. It's just not very practical. But anyway, I'm digressing. Just run my hands down. These two together hasn't done too much. <laughs> neaten them up slightly. Yeah, it's neaten them up slightly. Don't overly like the way these are clipped here, these are clipped here, but these are cut short. So without redoing whole legs, then, you know, it is what it is, unfortunately, but at least we can neaten that up. This is quite nice and neat. Once again, symmetrical cables going in. At least we got grommets everywhere. Lovely to see grommets everywhere. And they've tried to tuck the cables in. That's always good because we want to make everyone's life easier. That's easier for the plasterer. Sometimes plasterers can be assholes. Sometimes anyone can be an asshole. We want to try and work with everyone and not give them any excuse to be an asshole. Sometimes they will be, that shit's on them. We've got another good example of something here. Here, this is what we do with switches. They've done it here on a non-switch but this is what we do with switches. So we've got top and bottom eyelid. I don't know why they really put these on normal switches and uh, normal boxes anymore because it's from very old dated boxes where screws used to be at the top. The problem with these is with switches, some switches, the connection can be very close and you can actually get it tripping out, blowing to that top lug, seen it time and time again. So what we do is get a big screwdriver and knock them flat. Doesn't matter with this because it's an aerial, no load, but they've actually done it. Cameraman's gonna come around and show you a picture of these where they've kind of knocked them flat up anyway. Always do it on light switches. It just prevents any future problems. All we can do is our best. Let them know, let the contractors know, let the builders know. These are a bit more awkward because it's big, big council, I think, getting involved with someone else, getting involved with someone else, getting involved with someone else, getting involved with us. So the chain of command and the things that have to get relayed are just vast. Not one person necessarily managing it. All things get missed. Normally we work with a lot of smaller builders. We just tell them. 99 times out of 100, they just tell the plasterers jobs are good enough, but not so the case here. So we just put a clip there just to try and make it easier. At least now the plasterers fucked up on one job. They hopefully won't do it on the other. But anyway, that concludes our morning tour of taking over this job. Back.